in from the Stratford end, the bowl to Desmond Haynes, and in the commentary box, Ted Dexter and Jim Lincoln. And he's, yes, he's gone, he's caught behind. So Bob Willis striking the first blow for England as he's done many, many times. I suppose Desmond Haynes was due to miss out. He's missed out all right today, going to a catch by not behind. And West Indies are four for one, with Haynes out for just a single. And no half measures about that. Not for the first time, he's off the mark with a crushing four through mid-off. is the uh, master batsman of modern times here. Yeah. That's a lovely shot. Oh, that was a good stroke. S straight out of uh, any of the really good textbooks. And uh, I'm not sure, but I've just got a feeling there's uh, a little bit of... Uh, not aggro, but a little bit of feeling going on out there between Richards and Bob Willis. So when he hit him for four last over, he stood there and had a good, long, hard look at him. And so he did then when he smashed him away through the covers. The timing there was absolutely superb. piece of cricket that good diving catch going forward Gwenny just caught Larkin's bowl Dilly Haynes out for one Greenwich without scoring Richards is 20 out of 25 there are four extras and here's Dilly to Bacchus. Wow, oh, what a marvellous piece of cricket. First ball, Dilly's on the hat trick. Lovely piece of cricket there from Ian Botham. We said the crowd were getting a little bit excited. Uh, when we see this on the replay, we'll see what an truly magnificent catch it was he's quite an extraordinary cricketer Ian Botham because um, I'm quite certain he wasn't ready for that he's just about to uh, tuck his sweater in or sort out something with his hips and instead of that he finds himself going away to his right to take a superb catch yeah, the flurry of excitement has brought in Alvin Kalecharan it's also brought in four slips and a gully is Dilly again and safely negotiated by Kalicharan that hat trick well bold young fella there's a, a lot of fans not all that much younger than uh, Graham Dilly cheering on his efforts there three overs two maidens and he has two for one Didn't quite time that one as uh, well as some of the other strokes. Only two runs there. It wasn't very meant it, but it's still gone for four. Well, it's all fun and games out there with. Richards and Willis having a little dash at one another and Richards carving Willis all over the park and uh, between them Dilly and Willis having picked up three wickets that's another no ball and it's uh, certainly made Viv uh, hobble around Bats flung down, he's sat down. I think it's pinched a nerve. It's 
can catch him right at the knee and he's in a lot of trouble at the moment. It's going to make him hobble around for a while, but uh, I think it's one of those things that uh, he possibly run off in the space of a few minutes. In fact, Vivian Richards didn't really... Well, this was quite a stiff breeze behind him now. And that's racing away, no third man. It's yet another boundary being added to uh, Richard's total. Quite uh, a remarkable start to the innings. 50 coming up at the start of the 11th over here. And uh, 36 of those now to Viv Richards. Could almost be a replay of yesterday evening. With that front foot going out to the ball. And a glorious shot. Paul Motor Richards. And the head shaking there is probably because he didn't get the middle of the bat on that one. And it may also have jarred that spot where he was hit yesterday. Got him again. It is very dangerous when Viv Richard starts to limp. He limped twice badly in Australia last year. 130 and 160. Uh, a very, very good shot. He waited for that. Got away off the middle of the bat. Four more. There's no third man there. One of the little luxuries captains in uh, the modern day seem to provide for batsmen. Dilly has done all his bowling from the Warwick Road end. Just wondering if both of them may be going to switch him here to have the breeze at his back. He's bowled with plenty of pace so far in this West Indian innings. Bad luck. Great try. That would have been uh, one of the catches of the season. Bad luck for Wayne Larkins and for both of them. It's to be Graham Dilley. Uh, the Stratford end, Richard just taking strike. That's interesting. First ball, Dilly has bowled at Richards, and uh, it was a little beauty. That should please more than the selectors, Richie, when you see a young England fast bowler sending the keeper up high and right to take a delivery. Fairy from Viv Richards. Quite behind the line of that. <laughs> Left knee is taking uh, quite a beating out there. Richards is on 46, and suddenly he's uh, being faced with bowling that seems to me to be a yard quicker than anything he's seen so far in this innings. Good over. Very good over from Graham Dilley, his first with the breeze. 
He's now to bowl seven overs, four maidens, and taken two for 11. And he's gone this time. Kelly Turan doesn't bother waiting, and Dickie Bird doesn't bother giving him out. Botham has struck, and the fourth wicket goes down at 67, and that's rather good for England. Get rid of Kelly Turan that cheaply from a ball so wide of the stumps. Caught not by Botham, 13. And Alvin, who's not had a very good year, it's there to hit, but unfortunately he gets this thin edge to be caught behind. It's cleverly bowled. Uh, Lloyd is still off the mark. Botham there going right on the return crease, right on the bowling crease, and uh, out towards the return crease. Still bowling the outswinger or to the left-hander when that comes in from outside the off stump. Make by signaled. Fifty to Bib Richards. This morning, not always uh, with the ball finding the exact middle of the bat, but a delightful innings nonetheless. 48 balls he's faced, and he's hit 10 fours, and he's been in only 64 minutes. favourite strokes away through mid-wicket. Yeah, it's a very good timing there. You get all Jeff Boycott's speed. Cut off that boundary, but it's still picked up three. Good move in the field, Jeff Boycott. 39 years of age, but uh, there aren't too many fitter cricketers around. third man again there too many captains around uh, in my day Mike who were kind enough to leave out the third man from their field placings this is a position that uh, the West Indies uh, seem to to get away with with Richie it's quite incredible with four fast bowlers and they consistently don't have a third man as you say, when in the t years that I played, it was almost one of the first positions that a fast bowler wanted, unless he'd got four men in the ring. He seemed to hate this four off the edge. Well, he'll really be disappointed at that. Leg buys go on to the total. There's not much doubt in my mind that uh, he's trying to bowl Clive Lloyd behind his pads. Lloyd has this movement shuffling across the batting crease. dilly has been firing it in there around about leg stump every time the left-hander gets up there. Here's Ian Botham. Perfect line just outside off stump, left him off the wicket. And Viv Richards was very close to getting a snick to Alan Knott. Ian Botham in his uh, fourth over here this morning. It's good to see him uh, bouncing into the wicket once again. First time, I think, we've seen that this year. Very nearly dragged that on. And looks a uh, completely different bowler here. Restored to fully fitness. Wasn't the ball, in fact. A little bit close for him to try that uh, chop shot, even for the great Richards. A limited amount of test match cricket. As you can see, this is on his uh, third game. And uh, just five wickets today. Two of them have come uh, so far in this innings, and uh, I think this is certainly the best that I personally have seen uh, Graham Dilly bowl, be it a test match or a county match. He's bowled uh, exceedingly well here to date. Good length, good line. 
Seems to have ironed out the run. Good run to the wicket. Just, uh, still a little chest on, but uh, certainly a vast improvement. Well, them uh, has gone on to 147 wickets with that one of Kelly Turan. Remarkable uh, performance. Only 28 matches, 147 wickets. And if he plays till 35, goodness knows how many he's going to notch. Willis around that boundary there. It's two runs to Lloyd. And the consistency which with which he's taken these wickets, of course, is quite surprising. Five wickets in an innings, no less than 14 times. Ten wickets in a match on the three occasions, and eight for 34 is best performance. Finding those gaps in the on-site quite nicely. We'll pick up a brace of twos in this over. Players off for around uh, 40 minutes here this morning when uh, it really looked very miserable and dark. But, uh, plenty of cloud around, but it's brightened up considerably. And uh, certainly at the moment, shouldn't be any problem at all with the light. Just the one wicket to go down this morning. Kelly Jerome caught not hold both and for 13. Murray, Roberts, Garner, Marshall and Holden. Uh, 91 for four with Bob Willis coming back into the attack. Really savaged by Richards earlier in this innings. And he's after him again. That's up. Announced the arrival by crushing him through the offside for four. Well, here's Bob Willis bowling way wide of Richards off stump again. And I can't think that that's good tactics to a player of Richards' power. Which is very strong on the leg side, of course. But you can always put fielders to the strength of a batsman. But here we've got a split field, 4-5, and Richards is simply making hay. And coming to the office for more. It's a, a surprising bowling change as it's gone on to 99. Richard's taken such a great liking to uh, Bob Willis in this innings. But, uh, poor old Bob's coming back for more punishment here. And England's premier quick bowler reduced now to a single slip and extra covers. Uh, just as well, the third man is there. It's one run, three figures coming up for West Indies. And they're coming up in the remarkably quick time of uh, 23 overs. And the reason it's come up so rapidly, of course, is the fact that Richards now has made 65 of that 100. So poor old Bob Willis, eight overs, one for 53. I think just about all those runs have come uh, from the bat of Viv Richards. In fact, it's quite unusual. Uh, Wendy Wimbush just tells me that all 53 runs have come from uh, Bob Willis's bowling have been struck by Richards. So he's only taken 12 off the other England bowlers to date. A chance to add a few more now as he faces Ian Botham. And he's bowled them all over the place. Tremendous performances by Botham and a critical blow. Couldn't have come at a better time. The end of a magnificent innings there from uh, Viv Richards. And one man out there, Bob Willis, will be so relieved to see the back of him. So Botham has done it yet again for England. And West Indies now 100 for five, with Richards going for 65. The leg stump being flattened, knocked right out of the ground. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, I'm quite sure a lot of the applause from the England players is in relief as well as acknowledging yet another fine half century. Well, that certainly has levelled out this game. It's a very uh, even keel now. And England yet again indebted to their bowlers. Diving sprawl in the end by uh, Dilly out there. That meant that Murray just got a single. So he's away. That's a short one. Uh, Bob Willis never picked that up. It's often very difficult down on that boundary. He even brings a smile from both of Bob. Uh, Anybody's fielded down at long leg on this ground knows ball goes into the crowd. It's often very difficult to sight to begin with. And that's edged away this time. Very uh, lucky four runs for Clive Lloyd. Could really have gone anywhere. Three slips and a gully away to him, but it missed the lot. through mid off very straight Brian Rose giving chase just about to uh, pull that up see the bit of greasy turf too down there that's a steady little bit of drizzle we've had just lately well, a great morning that for England and in particular for Ian Botham two wickets there the prize wicket of Vivian Richards for 65 Alvin Cullich around for 13 but I thought the best bowling of the morning came from Graham Dilley he really has been a surprise packet here a fine performance from him and sadly for England anyway uh, 228 minutes of play lost then the players weren't able to come back until late in the afternoon and that was very very sad for the good crowd present who uh, really were cheering on Ian Botham and his men we pick up play now with five runs added after the resumption it's the second over Ian Botham is coming into bowl to Derek Murray and in the commentary box Ted Dexter and Jim Laker both I'm very much back in the old routine here today. That's a nice forcing shot off the back foot. A couple of runs in there for uh, Derek Murray. Well, not the most distinguished of shots there from. Uh, Rick Murray, never ever in line, but uh, picks up four runs for it. A solid average there, 42.76. Murray's gone on to 14. It's a full toss this time from uh, Dilly. Puts it away through the offside. And some enthusiastic running there by three of the England men. It was Brian Rose in the end who fired it in. It takes the score on to. 151-152 and gives West Indies lead here on first innings. And he's bowled into the beauty. Well, as good a ball as he was let loose all day there from uh, near both of them. Finally got through this pretty impregnable defence here of Derek Murray. And that wicket for England couldn't have come at a better time because these two were looking quite uh, a formidable partnership. 154 for six. Comfortable single sees Malcolm Marshall off the mark. Slightly more defensive now for Lloyd. Just the two slips remaining. And dug that one in again. And uh, Clive Lloyd hurry. It 
So Graham Dewey taking his sweater after a really admirable spell of bowling. 16 overs in all, two for 32, and could very easily have added a couple more wickets to his ball here today. Bob Willis, of course, will come back uh, with the aid of this stiff breeze. The uh, idea being to keep the quicker bowlers going at this end with the breeze behind them. And I'm sure Big Bob will be looking for some compensation. Yeah, Marshall taking a leaf out of Richard's book, hammering Bob Willis. Straight for four. Swing of the bat, uh, fine shot. Heard them now to Clive Lloyd. Oh, what a good attempt that was, and what a great catch it would have been. A couple of uh, great efforts in the field out there from the England players. Wayne Larkins missed a very difficult one, and now Brian Rose has put down Clive Lloyd. But it would have been an absolute blinder. And around the wicket now, Bob Willis with Lloyd on 49. And there's the half century for the West Indian captain. Dropped a short time ago by Brian Rose to cover a most difficult chance. And here he is halfway towards his ambition of striking 100 in this his final appearance in a test at Old Trafford. 50 came up in 81 balls and included four boundaries. Good shot again. It's two good boundaries this over by Marshall and applause from Clive Lloyd. A lovely stroke. And two slightly over pitched balls there. This, the last ball of the over. Although, uh, in fact, in the end, Marshall had to play a little bit out the pitch of it. But he certainly got it away right off the middle. Willis to Lloyd. It's a little ambitious. Willis's pace has dropped a bit this afternoon. And Clive Lloyd was just waiting there for that short pitch delivery coming from around the wicket. 46 ahead. Clive Lloyd's team and the skipper still there in this delightful Old Trafford sunshine. What a good shot. There's a no ball. Bob Willis has bowled 11 no balls now. And there's the 200 up for West Indies. 50 ahead. And every run made makes it a little more difficult for England. And uh, this will be a surprise for everyone, including Dickie Bird at the bowler's end. We're going to see a spin bowler in action in this Old Trafford Test match. It's Embury to bowl to Malcolm Marshall, who's on 50. Caught him at first slip. Marshall's gone for 18, 209 for seven. And a spirited effort from Graham Dilly here today. He's going away to his right hand side and a delighted both them alongside Gooch there. This is his first ball now from Graham Dilly. Good Yorker, even though Roberts does get off the mark. Oh, no doubt there, glorious square cut. It's the first time he's really middle one this morning.
it with all the power that we know Clive Lloyd can put into his shots. First time this morning, uh, Andy Roberts had a little fiddle there outside the off stamp. And indeed, it uh, is off spinner Andre who's going to uh, come on and take over from Dilly. So the field finally set for Embry to bowl to Lloyd with a deep square leg under a long off. But apart, it's a fairly orthodox field. And the first one pitching outside the leg stump. Quite sure yet whether that was off the pad or he got an edge to it. In fact, uh, neither. This is a plain straightforward by signal there. Just uh, one man away at deep square and mid wicket to mid on. That was a fairly risky shot. Must have pitched round about uh, like middle. If that was straightened, he could have been in trouble. But uh, he gets four runs for it. That's what really counts in the end. That's it. First one round about leg stump, tickled away, he'll be satisfied with one because that's a big moment here for Clive Lloyd. His first hundred in the test match on this, which he now considers his home ground, off comes the hat, and he's absolutely delighted. His uh, 1300 in test match cricket, made here out of a total of 248 for seven. And getting a really fine hand. Immensely popular character here at Old Trafford, and if any man's to make 100 against England, this is a man at Lancashire they'd like to see do it. And he's gone. A nice sharp catch there by Graham Gooch, Embry reclaiming Clive Lloyd's wicket. The great man having made 101, John Embry spun that one, possibly out of the bowler's foot marks at the far end, and that was a very sharp catch for Graham Gooch to have made. It was there to be hit, but uh, Lloyd was able only to get the outside edge onto it. Great moment for Clive Lloyd, and a sad one as well for lots of people. Applause as he leaves the Test Arena, Old Trafford, possibly for the last time. He may have to bat again, but what an ornament he's been to the game. Marvellous century in Adelaide, his last appearance in Australia earlier this year, and now here at Old Trafford, a century against England. A real sharp catch, this. Graham Gooch, this is going like lightning. Wallop came to just about the right height, but was almost getting too high to make it awkward. Almost seemed as though that was fated to happen because Clive Lloyd could have been out once or twice. Both of them had his moments against him. Seemed right that he should get his hundred and then already gone. Got to be very close at the top spinner, the quicker ball, and uh, I think that would have hit uh, Midland leg and it was very well pitched up. I think there's much doubt about that. I think Joel just uh, read it as being on a different line. In the air and through the hands. Just to brush the fingertips there, Mike Gatting, the fielder. it is difficult to go either sideways or push off upwards when the earth is soft out there as it is this morning. And there is the last wicket to John Embry. 
who's bowled extremely well this morning. And here we see the replay of the, the last wicket. And a very good catch by Alan Knott. As you'll see, it was a bottom edge. And wasn't it a pleasant sight to see a spinner in operation out there in the centre at Old Trafford?